and welcome back to Willow's Notes. Today we will talk about nucleic acids, but specifically about DNA, the structure of DNA, and the directionality of DNA. Nucleic acids like DNA and RNA, they're polymers. Polymers are made up of repeating units of monomers. Now, the monomers of nucleic acids are called nucleotides. Each nucleotide consists of a phosphate group, a pentose sugar, pentose meaning a five carbon sugar, and a nitrogenous base. In the pentose sugar, the carbons are numbered one, two, three, four, with carbon number five being outside the ring. The type of sugar in RNA is a ribose. Hence the name, ribonucleic acid. Look at carbon number two. It has a hydroxyl group. If we look over to the sugar in DNA, it is missing one oxygen. Hence the name, deoxyribose, meaning a ribose missing an oxygen. Carbon number one binds to the nitrogenous base, and we don't really need it to understand the directionality of DNA. What we do need to know are carbons number three and five. Carbon number five binds to a phosphate group completing one nucleotide, while carbon number three will bind to the phosphate of the next nucleotide. And here's how a nucleotide looks like, with the phosphate bound to carbon number five and the base to carbon number one. Now let's look at the bases before we move on. When you see two fused rings, it's a purine base, meaning it's either adenine or guanine. When there's just one ring, it's a pyrimidine base, where in DNA, it is cytosine and thymine, and in RNA, the thymine is replaced by uracil. For simplicity, I've sketched the phosphate group as P. But now we need to draw a proper phosphate to show how two nucleotides will condense with one another. Remember that a condensation reaction is a dehydration reaction. So the OH of the phosphate group and the hydrogen from the sugar will be lost as water. This will link the P of the phosphate group to the oxygen of the sugar. This is how the condensation reaction will look like. Notice that the link, the bond between the two nucleotides is known as phosphodiester linkage and water is released in the process. Let's recap what I just said. Carbon number three of one nucleotide will bind to the phosphate of the next nucleotide. Again, carbon number three of one nucleotide will bind to the phosphate of the next until we get our polynucleotide. And this is how our phosphate sugar backbone of the nucleic acid is formed. Notice that the direction of this trend is five prime to three prime. Now, what does that mean? If you look at the first nucleotide, carbon number five is on the top, right? And as we add nucleotides, we're always adding it to carbon number three. If you notice the last nucleotide, carbon number three is open for a new nucleotide to be added. So the direction of the strand is five prime to three prime. DNA is double stranded. Now, of course, I'm not talking about uh, exceptions like in some viruses that have single stranded DNA. So here I added a strand of DNA. The bases aren't even facing each other. So we will take the strand and give it a 180 degrees turn. If you're doing this on a piece of paper, my advice is to draw one strand on a separate piece of paper and the second on another so that you can hold the paper and turn it upside down. And once you turn it upside down, look at how perfectly they align with one another and how the bases pair up with each other. Now look at the direction of the complementary strand. Unlike the five prime to three prime direction, because we took this strand and turned it 180 degrees, we can see that it's going from three prime to five prime direction. Everything is upside down compared to the complementary strand. 
And this is why we say that the DNA strands are anti-parallel. Finally, the two strands are held together by the hydrogen bonds between paired bases. A always pairs with T with two hydrogen bonds and C always pairs with G and they have three hydrogen bonds between them. And this is everything we need to know regarding the structure of DNA. If I forgot anything you feel is important, please write it in the comments section and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.